All right, hi everyone. So welcome to the second episode of My JD Manga Explained. So in today's video, we're going to be doing a explanation of chapters 1048 and 1049 combined. This will be the only time where we do two chapters in one, and then after that we will be doing single chapters. So how this works is we just do a brief summary and give our thoughts on the chapter. The chapter begins with Luffy about to do his final move and Momonosuke is trying to find a way to keep the island afloat because when Luffy lands his final hit, that's it. The island is gonna lose its flaming rings that Kaido is giving to it and it will fall down. It will plummet, everybody will plummet to their deaths. So as Luffy is about to do his final move, Kaido turns on fire and uses his final move to evaporate Luffy's move. We see that he glows fiery red and is using a new move called Flaming Drum Dragon and he's about to use it and he's about to take a head-on hit from Luffy's attack and he is certain that he'll be able to evaporate the shot. Luffy's punch collides with Kaido's and the scene flashes to Usopp letting the samurai drop as the water was coming in and everybody is cheering on Luffy and hoping is able to take down Kaido. We, we just see how everybody is in desperation like they want this to end, they want the battle to be done. They don't want to put in the sacrifice to go in vain, it, it's gotta end now. And then here we uh, we see a flashback of Odin burning in oil and telling his followers to run away and don't look back. And as they hear the silencing shot to Odin, they're all grief stricken. It leads to with Kaido going ahead and going after them to try to kill them. And yeah, he's even hitting civilians that get in his way. And once it's done, everybody thinks that they're all dead. And with them supposedly being dead, Orochi bringing all the daimyos into question on whether they want to follow Orochi in his new regime or to fight back. As the samurai do, they fight back and are defeated swiftly by Kaido. And Orochi laughs and just sends insults their way and we just see how when they failed, everybody was put into slave labor in Udon and how the water progressively got very tainted. People were being taken away. Kids were being taken to work as slave labor to make their weapons in Udon. The land dried up, water became undrinkable, and people were basically dying. And then also we see how Orochi just laughs as the residents of Ebisu town eat the fruit and then they start to laugh and he takes great joy in their suffering and from here it flashes right back to orochi changing into his new form and attacking komurasaki or as we know hiyori kozuki and he's about to attack her with his hydro form as it is and she is saved at the last minute by kyoshiro the head of orochi falls down the head of the coward. And the chapter ends with Orochi's defeat and the imminent attacks between Luffy and Kaido. Thanks for that uh, summary of chapter 1048. So now I will give a very brief summary of chapter 1049. So basically this chapter starts off with Kaido and Luffy fighting it out in the air. And then after that, we go into a flashback of Kaido in the Kingdom of Vodka, that Oda calls it, where we basically see Kaido when he was young. In this flashback, we see that he is being enlisted for the Navy and Kaido does not want to be put in that position. And so he becomes a wanted criminal because he escaped from the Navy. And then after that, we see that Kaido joins the Rocks Pirates, which included Whitebeard, Big Mom, Rocks Dizabek, and other pirates. And then we eventually see Kaido with King discussing about Joy Boy, 
where Kang was very curious about who Joy Boy is and Kaido answers him by saying, I think I know who it is. And then after that, we go back to the present with everything that is happening on Onigashima and how everybody is having a hard time to hold on to the island because of the water uh, drenching them. So now, uh, once we go back to the present, we then go briefly back to the flashback where Kaido answers King's question about who Joy Boy is by saying, I know who it is. So Kaido says to King that it will be the person that will defeat him. And then at, right at that moment, we switch quickly back to the present and Luffy punches out Kaido and Kaido just falls to the ground. And that's basically what ends up happening at the end of chapter 1049. Great, great summary. Now we're gonna move on to our opinions and our views from these two chapters. Yeah, basically my thoughts like, what the f Who would have thought we would get this moment right now, you know? Yeah, I am surprised that he beat Kaido. Like, I'm like, wow, this guy just, he was that kind of person that just wouldn't get beat. Like, I, Yeah, no, I felt like this was the right moment. You have to agree that he is defeated in this chapter, right? Because he said, Joy Boy will be the person that will defeat me. And then Luffy throws his final punch on Kaido. And then after that, he just, he looks very defeated. So I think that for sure after this chapter, He's defeated for good. Yeah, I mean, when I read it in the chapter, I was like, okay, he's he's gonna be defeated. Okay, it's happening now. All right, uh, and my thoughts on it is, uh, yay, great. I'm glad that his arrogance got the best of him and he just got defeated. But then again, like him knowing that he was gonna get defeated by the reincarnation of Joy Boy, that was cool because that was some good foreshadowing he's not getting back up like he is defeated and that's it that's it yeah and what i really loved about this chapter is how kaido asked luffy what kind of person do you want to be and basically we've seen in this chapter that luffy all the people that he's encountered like tama the slaves of udon his problem with what's happening there now is how they're starving and how they don't have something to eat, right? And Luffy's all about like making sure that everyone is living like a free life and is not under the control of some tyrant. So basically what I really liked about this chapter in particular was how at the very end when Luffy is about to throw his final punch to Kaido, Kaido asks him, what kind of world do you wish to make? And then Luffy says, a world where my friends can eat and basically he's referencing like all the people that he's encountered throughout Wano like Tama who who didn't have a clean source of water to drink from and who had barely any food to eat and then the slaves who had to like basically work their way to get like one small piece of dough I think it was just to survive in the prison so basically after all that has happened and then Kaido asks him this question and he says like, a world where all my friends can eat. I really, really found that amazing. And it just, it went really well with the final blow. And I think that it convinces us even more that Luffy has definitely defeated Kaido. What are your thoughts about this? Yeah, so I like that because it shows that Kaido literally orchestrated his own downfall by literally making people suffer and just being overall a, just a terrible, terrible person. Like he was the one that made all this happen. Him being like defeated by Luffy, being motivated to make change on like what he did. Just like the whole reason that he lost was because he goaded Luffy into going as far as he did. He couldn't lose. There's no way that he would ever have let Kaido get away with all of this for more than 20 years. And I, I like that. That's like, it's not a tragedy like, you know, Shakespearean, but like, it's like Kaido himself predicted his own defeat. He, he knew that people would rise up to fight him. That, that's what he wanted. He wanted survival of the fittest. That's what he went by in back in the day when he was in the Rocks Pirates and even when he was younger. All he wanted was war and just brutality and just settling matters by battle. 
So yeah, you know, the strong will rule and the weak will suffer. And that is how he spelled his own defeat in the end. So now that Luffy has defeated Kaido, it begs the question, what will happen next? So I think, because based on what happened in the anime and the manga, you know, they were supposed to have like this banquet all together, like all the crew members, the 10 crew members, because Jinbei just joined the crew, but they didn't have the time to properly celebrate his joining of the crew. And so I think that they're gonna have like a really, really huge banquet in Wano with everybody from Wano because like, you know what they always do after they defeat someone at the end of every arc? You know what they do, right? They have a party. Exactly. And you remember that pose that Luffy did in like the, the moon when he activated the gear five? Do you remember that? Yeah. It almost looks like a pose that he made on Skypea. And I remember in Skypea, they had a large party where he was basically dancing with that pose. So I think that we're gonna have some kind of reference to like Skypea. Like it might be the same kind of banquet that takes place in Wano. Okay, so yeah, no, one of the emperors have been defeated now. So I'm assuming the world government's gonna try to go into Wano somehow. Oh, you know what I just thought of? You know what? You know what I think will happen? What if Rob Lucci appears, you know, CP, because there's CP0, right? And what if he and like Kaku and all the others, they, they appear and everybody and there's like the world government. Somehow they make it to Wano, even though it's like a close country. And they go after Nico Robin, and now the crew has to deal with the world government, and like the battle is not over. What do you think? Do you think that would be true? Yeah, because like yeah, right now with Kaido gone, they're gonna come over and they're gonna try to, they're gonna come to Wano and they're gonna try to get rid of Straw Hat and Nico Robin. You know, Nico Robin because obviously like she's wanted, and also because Luffy has the gum gum fruit, and we know how much of a threat it poses to the world government. Yeah, that makes sense, right? They let Luffy, they let them fight it out, and you know now he's taking care of someone who's like really really hard to defeat, and so now it's convenient for them, and they come, and now they deal with the crew and get a second chance at trying to retrieve Nico Robin, which they failed to do like two years ago. Yo, with like the Wano arc coming to a close, I'm wondering if we're gonna get more information on the reverie, what happened to the, in the reverie. Oh yeah, yeah, because right when the news broke out about what happened to Sabo and Vivi, which we actually did a video back in December, which we will link in the description down below. Now that everything in Wano is done, and then once they eventually leave it, you know, all the news is gonna come flooding in. It's like how when you're on an airplane with no Wi-Fi, and then after that you come in to the airport, and then all the messages come flooding in. So I think it's gonna be the same situation. You know, all the news is gonna come oh to them, goodness. to the crew. Yeah, the, the crew, the Straw Hat crew's bounty is gonna go up like so much now because they just defeated an um, emperor. Yeah, oh Their, my god. The bounties are gonna go up crazy, especially <laughs> Luffy. Luffy's gonna have a bigger bounty than Kaido. Remember when Kaido had the biggest bounty at one point? Yeah, I, I think his bounty is like 4 billion or something around. Wow. Yeah, so I think Luffy's bounty will double to like. 8 billion or something like that. Yeah, man, like... What do you think? Yeah, man, like, he... I think he was branded as an emperor. Like, like a fifth emperor or something like that. Yeah, but a lot of people, like, I don't know, some pirates don't really... They didn't really consider it, so it's kind of like, he is, but he is not kind of thing. Hmm. Yeah, I wonder what island is next. Like, uh, I th honest, I think the next island is probably gonna be Elbath. They go to uh, Elbath. Oh yeah, I think there may have been a mention of that. So, I found it not very clear. Do you think that some of the Red Scabbards are gonna die in the series? Because like, they were in a pretty bad state, like Kinemon and Kiku, like, 
when they were with Usopp, I think they're gonna be like dead, some of them. What do you think? Uh, I don't think so. Maybe, maybe not. They were in critical condition, but would they kill off some of the red scabbards? Like, the battle is over. It could be like a shocking reveal that they might actually just be dead. Like, they're gonna die, but like, I don't think that... I don't think it's gonna happen. I don't think he'll do that. That's, that's way too of a shocking reveal. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Please remember to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video with your friends, and we will see you next time. I am Jay. And I'm Dee. And we are my JD Anime Academia, and stay tuned for our next video.